Hey guys, this is God of Politics. Welcome back to a brand new video. But before we get started with this video, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, join the Discord that is linked down in the description. Again, we have the mock of going on. That's a really interesting thing, so you should make sure to join that. That is linked down in the Discord, along with uh, along with the Discord in the description. But in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Democrats' pathway towards the Senate majority. Now. You know, Democrats have a pathway to the Senate majority now that they really did not have, uh, you know, prior to a couple months ago. And this is looking very good for Democrats, along with Joe Biden's recent spike in the polls. is looking more and more likely that Democrats are going to take the Senate majority, or at least that the Republicans are going to be on the defensive in terms of winning seats. You know, at the current Senate, you have 53 Republicans, 45 Democrats, and two independents that caucus with the Democrats. But I've narrowed it down here to the elections. I've narrowed it down to seven toss-up seats here. You know, I've put, you know, the seats that really don't have much chance to flip at all. States like, you know, Michigan, you know, states like South Carolina. And the interesting thing you may see, which we'll talk about in a second is that Georgia's special election is covered as lean Democrat, but the non-special election is covered as a toss-up, meaning we'll be talking about that. I'll talk about that in a second, but, you know, I will start talking about the West first. I know that makes the most sense. First, with the state of Arizona here. You know, Arizona is a state Democrats can easily win, and I do believe that they will win. You have Martha McSally, the Republican incumbent here, who wasn't actually elected but appointed by the governor here. You know, she lost the election in 2018, and the polls are looking just absolutely abysmal for her against Mark Kelly. Like, the New York Times poll that came out showing her down nine was her best poll since March. So, really, she does not have much chance of winning. I could easily put the state in the likely column almost, but I'll put it in the lean column for now. But, really, she does not have much chance of winning. And this is looking like it's going to be a Democratic pickup with one of their best recruits in terms of winning a seat, which is Mark Kelly, one of the best recruits. The next state is the state of Colorado. You have incumbent Republican Senator Cory Gardner here. Um, you know, you have the incumbent, or you have the former governor, John Hickenlooper, for the Democrats running. And, you know, he's done a lot of scandals, things like that. He has a contested primary to run. But, you know, I think when it's all said and done, he's still going to end up winning quite easily, actually, by a likely margin against Cory Gardner. Uh, Colorado's a state that's been trending blue for quite a while now. And... I think that, um, you know, John Hickenlooper is going to win quite easily, despite all the scandals that he has. You know, it, it, he's the former governor. He's a very popular figure here. Cory Gardner is not a very popular figure, and it's a state that's trending blue. Cory Gardner was only elected from the 2014 midterms. That was the surprise of the night when he got elected. So I do believe that that's a seat that will go to the Democrats as well. The next state that the Democrats can win to get a pathway to the Senate majority is Montana. And, you know, I'm going to be filling all these states blue. That doesn't mean they will go blue. But it's possible. But the state of Montana, in the state of Montana, you have incumbent Republican Senator Steve Daines uh, running against the governor, term-limited governor, Steve Bullock. So the Battle of the Steves. Um, you know, Steve Daines has got quite good uh, fundraising. Many of you maybe have seen his ads on YouTube and things like that. He spent a lot of his money. Steve Bullock's out-raising Steve Daines, but Steve Daines has more money on hand. And, you know, Montana's a weird state. It elected John Tester to the Senate, but it's also, you know, went to Donald Trump by 20 points. And it also was close in 2008. And also, you know, the governor race is close, and it's going to be close this time, too. So, Montana's a very weird state. Um, Montana is a very weird state. Sorry, my alarm just went off there. But, Mon yeah, again, Montana is a very weird state. But it's a state that Democrats, I do believe, have the slight ability to win. You know, if they could win in 2018 with John Tester by a couple points, I do believe Steve Bullock can narrowly pull off an upset. But it's going to, you know, the, real, the, the odds are against them. It's going to be very tough. But if they want to get a pathway to the Senate majority, that is one of the ways they do it. The next seat is the state of Iowa. The state of Iowa here, you have Joni Ernst, who is actually one of the most unpopular senators in the country behind Mitch McConnell and, Su and, and um, Susan Collins here. Iowa is a seat that's been trending red, but again, you know, we've seen the polls so far showing that Iowa is actually very close at both the presidential level and the Senate level. And, you know, this may be a bit of a stretch in terms of winning it, but you have Teresa Tomlinson for the Democrats here who is, you know, like Su uh, like Joni Ernst in many ways, you know, a middle-aged white woman 
from the suburban areas, which could help Theresa Tomlinson. And Joni Ernst is, again, not very popular in this state. But if the Democrats want to win, they should put a lot of resources in Iowa into, into fundraising, into things like that. Because it matters at the presidential level, too. While states like Montana don't really matter at the presidential level, Iowa does matter. Joe Biden's doing very well there right now. If there were more polls that came out, it could give us better insight on how well Democrats are actually doing in this Senate race. But I do believe it is a state Democrats can win if they want to get a pathway to the Senate majority. The next state is actually the Georgia non-special election here. You have David Perdue here. Uh, David Perdue is the Republican incumbent. And the reason I say this election and not the special election is on the special election, you you could reasonably have Democrats getting locked out of that because the way you have the primary or the election is that if no, if the top two candidates end up advancing to the runoff. And it's looking like right now Collins, George, uh, Doug Collins and um, Kelly Loeffler are, you know, quite easily ahead of the Democratic candidates in this race. So it's looking like they're going to lock Democrats out of this race here, which would actually be quite an interesting thing to see, which would mean that that seat is most likely going to go to Republicans. But as for the non-special elections, you have David Perdue here is actually not a very strong incumbent. He only won in 2014 by just under eight percentage points in a D plus in an R plus six year. Um, you know, by the same margin that Romney won it in 2012, and he's not a very strong incumbent. The suburbs aren't doing very well for him. He'll do well in the rural areas, but, you know, that can't entirely win you the state. You need at least some of the suburban areas, and you do have John Ossoff, who has done very well in the polls so far, and it is a trending blue state where the suburbs are trending blue very, very fast. So this is a, dis um, a state that I do believe Democrats could easily win if they want to win the Senate majority, you know. The odds are still against them again, but I do believe it does say they win. As for the odds being for them, I do believe in the state of North Carolina, the odds are for them in the state of North Carolina. In the state of North Carolina, you have Cal Cunningham, the retired, I believe, Army veteran, going up against uh, Tom Tillis, who is, you know, quite an unpopular senator, uh, you know, in his state. And one of the interesting things we're seeing is that he's running about two points behind Donald Trump in virtually every poll in North Carolina. And at the moment, Donald Trump himself is not doing very well in North Carolina. And I do believe for Donald Trump to be able to carry Tillis over the line, Donald Trump's going to have to win the state by more than two uh, for Tillis to be able to win as well, which I, as of now, don't think is going to happen. And so, therefore, I do think Cal Cunningham is going to win. You know, um, North Carolina is a state that could easily go either way in both the presidential election and the Senate election. But as of now, I do believe that Cal Cunningham is favored in the Senate election there. Also, the state of Maine. You know, this is Susan Collins' biggest challenge yet. She's won quite easily in all of her elections so far. Uh, you know, she's had good contenders and good elections before, but she's always ended up winning by a lot. It's not looking like it's going to be this way this time. Sarah Gideon is a very good candidate, pretty much the best candidate the Democrats could have gotten, the Speaker of the Main House. Again, a middle-aged white woman, which does appeal to a lot of people, believe it or not, in, like, you know, the suburban areas. Um, that's been a very appealing thing, as we've seen before. You know, not, nothing, uh, you know, nothing about them, just the fact that, uh, you know, that that's a characteristic of them, and that's helped the Democrats in some of these areas, winning in the midterms with House races, things like that, you know, as, as a challenge to the people who feel out of touch. And Susan Collins did not, you know, did not make Democrats happy by voting for Kavanaugh, did not make Republicans happy by voting to keep Obamacare. So, you know, there's very, you know, str you know, crazy things going on in Maine, and Susan Collins is not popular anymore. She used to be one of the most popular senators. She's now one of the most unpopular senators. And so I do believe that she will end up losing to Sarah Gideon. It's going to be a very close race again, but I do believe that when it's all said and done, she is going to end up losing this seat. And so, you know, if Democrats were able to win all those seven seats, Democrats would have a 53 to 47 Senate majority. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. You know, I do think Republicans are going to win Iowa and Montana and Georgia. Democrats can still get the Senate majority in that scenario. But this is the scenario of how Democrats can get a pathway to the Senate majority. And that is with these seven seats. So thank you all for watching this video. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, join the Discord that is linked down in the description. Join the mock-up that, that's there as well. So again, thank you all for watching this video, and I will see you guys later.